I believe you have been gifted your dreams and your passions for a specific purpose. But if you don't pursue them with all that you've got, there will come a day when you are confronted by a form of regret that will devastate you. I know what that feels like. At the age of 23, I was arrested and faced a life sentence in prison for a crime I didn't commit. It was the worst nightmare you could ever imagine, only I never woke up. For the next year, I was isolated inside my cell for 23 hours a day. I honestly felt like I was dying in that cell and every moment became a fight for my life. But it wasn't the horrible living conditions and intimidating surroundings that concerned me most. It was the realization that my life was over and I had not lived the way I truly wanted. All I kept thinking is, it's over? My life is over? And that was the person you showed the world? That was the way you chose to live? The truth was, I thought I had more time. More time to live the life I dreamt of as a kid. But that's not the way it happened. And now I was stuck in that cell and my life was over. I experienced the worst form of regret you could ever imagine. Every excuse, every wasted opportunity, and all the days I spent living to impress others instead of being true to who I was. Those are the memories that started to haunt me. Imagine how you'd feel in that moment looking back on your life, knowing you could have given more, but you held back and now it was all over. I would have lived my life so much differently if I knew the pain I was going to face. I couldn't think of anything I was proud of. My greatest accomplishment was graduating high school, but I didn't even earn that. I went to a continuation school for two years, where I did the same world history over and over to earn enough credits to graduate with my class. I treated life like it was a joke, and now I was suffering the consequences because of it. When you're young, you think you have all the time in the world, but that's not true. It takes time to bring your dreams to life, and if you don't embody that person now, chances are you never will. The key is to never stop being that person, that kid at heart who knows what they want, that is your greatest self. Never lose touch with that person. When I was a kid, I knew exactly who I was and what I wanted out of life. I wanted to be a professional athlete and compete at the highest level. But those dreams started to fade as I got older. And in high school, I never stepped foot on a field or played any sports. I allowed fear to stop me from what my heart was calling me to do. Fear of not being good enough. Fear of what others thought. Fear of failure. As the years went on, this fear and self-doubt continued to plague me. I didn't know it at the time, but I was conditioning myself to become someone who achieves less than they are capable. What do you think happens to that person later on in life? Do you think I would have suddenly changed? After high school, I worked a job I didn't love, made excuses why I didn't need to go to college, and surrounded myself with others doing the same. That was a recipe for a miserable life. Why do you think people end up unhappy, depressed, anxious, or abusing drugs and alcohol to escape their reality. They fool themselves into living a life they don't really want. And this is exactly how it happens. I lied to myself to believe my choices were okay, even though deep down in my heart, I knew it wasn't the life I wanted. And if I didn't go to prison, I never would have uncovered this truth. I ended up being sentenced to seven years in the California prison system. And those became the best years of my life to that point. I was finally starting to see the truth that I failed to understand as a teenager and young adult. And when I did, I became a man on a mission. I made a deep internal promise to myself that I would never again hold back from being who I knew I could be. Because I directly associated holding back and making excuses or worrying about what others thought to being in that cell. And it tortured me. I remember thinking to myself one day, what if I live every moment from here on out, never holding back and going all in to be the person in my heart I know I can be. My mind began to race with visions of what my life could be like if I did give my all. But then another thought surfaced. What could I actually do to improve my life from a small cement box? I mean, I was in a cell so small, I could reach out and touch both walls at the same time. I was going to be in prison for years and I had nothing, just some writing paper and a couple of random books. Most of the guys tried to sleep all day and pretend it wasn't real. But I had been doing that my entire life and I was done with that approach. I started waking up early while it was still dark out and doing anything I could to better myself. I would clean my cell every morning like it was a palace. Jail is a disgusting place and no matter what you do, you can never escape the foul smells. 
For me, it was more about taking pride in who I was and doing everything to the best of my ability. When I would work out, I wouldn't stop until I was exhausted and my arms felt like they were going to fall off. Every push up and every drop of sweat became symbolic of my willingness to change. I refused to quit on myself and these daily actions reinforced my desire to transform my life. After I exercised, I would jump on my bunk and write letters home or read a book. I had a cellmate at the time and I got in the habit of asking him how to spell certain words as I wrote my letters back home. Eventually, he got annoyed with me and one day I asked him how to spell a word and out of the corner of my eye, a small pocket dictionary hit me in the shoulder. Look it up, he said. At first, I was kind of upset, but he was a big guy covered in tattoos. So instead of saying anything, I thought to myself, okay, watch this. I started looking up any word I didn't recognize, and I made a list that I would then quiz myself on every week, just like I was back in junior high. I started using those words in my letters back home and putting more effort into my writing. My first couple letters were hardly legible, and I felt embarrassed by how bad my penmanship was. But soon, my family members were writing me back, commenting on how much my writing had improved. It felt great to get that positive feedback and recognition for my efforts. One day, my cellmate was working on a poem he wanted to send to his girlfriend, and he was getting frustrated. He asked me to help him, and I wrote a few lines he ended up sending as his own work. The next week, he got a response, and she was saying how much she loved the poem and asked if he had copied it from a book. These two experiences had a massive impact on how I perceived myself. Here I was at the age of 23. I never tried in high school, and I thought I wasn't very smart. I doubted myself and always held back because of it. This was the first time in years I had embraced a challenge out of my comfort zone, and I excelled. Getting that positive feedback and seeing how quickly my effort helped me improve sparked a realization that has served me ever since. It's not necessarily what you are doing, but how you are doing it that has the greatest impact on your self-esteem. That shift in my perspective and attitude massively impacted the way I spent my time incarcerated. I realized there were things I could do to better myself and help me take control of my life. I knew it wouldn't happen overnight, but it was possible, and that's all I needed to know. Instead of wasting my time being angry or upset about my situation, I was able to experience gratitude for what felt like a second chance. I saw this as a reset, an opportunity to live life differently going forward. I started thinking that my incarceration was happening for me, not to me. Once I adopted that mentality, nothing could stop me. My entire life, I felt like a prisoner, unable to live and be the person at heart I truly felt I was. Now, I was in prison, and I was starting to experience more freedom than I ever had. If I had spent my days depressed about the past or worrying about the future, it would have paralyzed me, and I wouldn't have seen these little opportunities right in front of me to improve myself. We do this all the time. We take away the significance of the moment we are in by worrying about some made-up scenario in our head. My ability to block out negativity and focus on the things within my control gave me something positive to channel my energy into every day. I was training my mind to recognize positive aspects of any situation I was in. In the chow hall or the prison library and in the building with a thousand inmates being loud and combative, I was able to find the good in any moment I was in. In the past, I had always paid more attention to the negative parts of my life. And because of that, I failed to see opportunities to better myself even when they were all around me. Now I was changing my perspective and I had to reinforce this mentality with consistent action every day. This meant starting with the small tasks first, cleaning my cell every morning, looking at words in my pocket dictionary, and never missing a workout. These daily actions were life-changing. Oftentimes we think it's the big decisions or actions that will impact our life the most, but it's actually the small things because those happen much more often. Focusing on the small actions in your life day to day will build momentum and give you the confidence to achieve bigger goals. But if you neglect the little things, you will feel unprepared when the bigger moments of your life surface. My small daily task of looking up words in the dictionary gave me the confidence to enroll in a college correspondence program when I got to prison. I ended up earning four college degrees 
and getting six months off my sentence because of that. Not only did I get time off my sentence, but I grew passionate about my studies. I became fascinated by psychology and understanding human behavior. This served me to better understand myself and the changes I've been going through, as well as the other inmates I lived amongst. Instead of seeing murderers or robbers, I saw guys who needed help just like I did. My open-mindedness helped me build relationships and eventually mentor other inmates while I was incarcerated. I started showing the men around me how to make the same adjustments I had made to lead a more productive and fulfilling life despite being in prison. I didn't know it at the time, but this was the beginning of my career in coaching and leadership. My willingness to take action on small tasks every day opened the door to a world full of possibilities. Anytime I had that moment of intuition when my consciousness told me to do something that I knew was positive and good for me, I took action immediately. I can't even count how many times this happened. All those decisions and actions day by day added up, and I started to see my life transform before my eyes. Prior to prison, I would hold back, make excuses, and not follow my heart. And that's why I lived a life I didn't truly love. It wasn't the life I wanted. Now in prison, I did the opposite. I followed my heart in every waking moment. And because of that, I experienced more peace and joy than ever before. My years in prison became the most productive and fulfilling years of my life to that point. I mentored other inmates, earned four college degrees, facilitated self-help groups and rehabilitative programs. I even gave a speech in front of the prison warden and inmate population before I was released. By the time I was set to come home, I was a new man with a new life. The person at heart I knew I could be, ready to live the life I wanted, the life I deserved. You're going to have moments all throughout your life when your truth is revealed. They are special moments when your intuition is strong and you have clarity. What I've experienced is that every time you follow that intuition and take action, new doors will open for you. It changes things in your life. It changes your destiny. But if you don't, the opposite occurs. Doors close and what could have been never will be because you didn't take action your heart was calling. I'll never forget when I was 17, I was at the beach and a bunch of the kids I grew up with were playing football. They asked me if I wanted to play. I joined them and despite not playing all through high school, I was the MVP out there that day. I was diving for catches, making big plays, and I even tackled the biggest kid on the field and sent him flying backwards. After the game, they were all asking me why I didn't play in high school and telling me how good I would have been. We all talked about playing together at Santa Barbara City College the following season. And in that moment, I knew definitively that's what I wanted to do. I would enroll at City College and I would try out for the football team. But the next day I woke up and the excitement I felt the day before at the beach had vanished. Instead, I was confronted with negative thoughts and emotions. What if I'm not good enough to make the team? Who am I to think I can just jump right into college football? What are the other players going to think when I show up for tryouts? So I never went. I never gave it a shot. My heart knew what I wanted, but once again, my fears had won me over. We do this to ourselves all the time, in big moments that have the capacity to change our lives, like that day at the beach, or in small decisions we make every day that we hardly recognize. When we do, we limit ourselves. We kill our potential and what could have been. There will be times when you feel like I did. You'll feel your true self wanting to emerge. It might be something simple as raising your hand in class to answer a question, or asking out your crush to the school dance. And there will be times when you want to join a new social club or try out for a new sports team. Maybe you want to pursue a hobby you're passionate about, but the people in your life won't agree or understand. All throughout your life, there will be moments when you are confronted by fear or people doubt you. I want you to know that your fear and any doubt you have about yourself isn't real. It's your belief in those things that will give them power over you. And you can change that. If you're scared like I was or insecure, I want you to think about where I came from to get here. Remember the small steps I took? My life didn't magically change overnight. I'm not gifted or different than you. I want you to know that at one time, I was that scared kid. And deep down inside, sometimes I'm still scared. But I don't listen to the fear any longer. I realize that I don't have to. 
Following my heart instead of listening to my fear has changed my entire life. And although the dreams I had as a kid didn't come true, the dreams I envisioned for my prison cell have now become my reality. I've gone from inmate number AN1137 to a devoted husband and father, accomplished life coach, best-selling author, and TEDx speaker in just three years since coming home from prison. Look, I don't have some secret ability you don't have. I just figured it out, and once I did, I never stopped. Remember what I did to get here. Remember how I faced my fears and was able to build momentum over time with small, consistent actions. Remember that I always focus on the positive in any situation I was in. And remember how I refuse to quit. I promise if you apply these same principles in your life, if you trust your intuition and face your fears, you will do something amazing in your lifetime. You will experience more success, more joy and fulfillment than you could ever imagine. And you will look back one day on your life and feel so proud of yourself for never giving up. If I could do this from a prison cell, I promise you can too.